You can always count on NECA delivering the terror. Here's your look at the NECA toys. This is the Toonie Terrors Nosferatu. Bring the fun of Saturday morning cartoons to your horror collection with these adorable little creeps. Pick your favorites or collect them all and make every day Toonie Terror time. Before we get a closer look at Count Orlock, the first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall the Toonie Terror of Nosferatu stands. Speaking of standing, I'm sort of cheating for the time being, as I can't get this guy to quite stand perfectly. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second. In the meantime, I'm just using a clear NECA display stand just to help prop him up. According to the tape measure, though, you're looking at Nosferatu standing 5.8 inches in height. And switching that to centimeters, you're then looking at the figure being almost 15 centimeters, 14.9 to be exact. Someone who has no problem standing, let's do some size comparisons by bringing in the previously looked at nun, Valak. While we're also in the market of doing that, let's bring in the Ash Williams. These are all the figures that of course make up this wave. And a big thank you to the folks over at NECA who provided the samples of all the th three figures that we've looked at in this review. Oh, well, technically two figures we've already looked at, Nosferatu, we still have to check out. But if you're in the market of picking up any one of these or all three of them, you should be able to find them through various online sites or retail stores like Targets and Walmarts. As you can see again, like the sizing does change a lot between them. Ash is a little bit more closer in size to Nosferatu. Valak is a much shorter figure simply just because we have her in a running pose or him in a running pose, but I do like the fact that each one of them brings something different to the table. Speaking of bringing things to the table, Nosferatu brings along with him a little tiny rat. Funny enough story, actually, prior to the recording and shooting of Nosferatu, there was an ad in the newspaper that ran on July 31st, 1921, that asked for 30 to 50 living rats, where they were using these rats, of course, for the filming of Nosferatu. If anybody has seen the film and know by how many rats there were in the film, the ad was successful, I would say. I like the smile, sort of a sinister look that they've given the little tiny rat. I could say for perhaps that it would be nice if they had thrown in a more than just one little critter, as he certainly does have a lot of rats, but still nonetheless. Kind of like the detailing that they've even got the little sticking up spine that's sticking up the back of the rat there. Overall, just a nice detailed looking figure, right down to its little tiny buck teeth on the front. And again, a real sinister looking smile, you could say, for the rat itself. This is just, again, something that's going to stand alongside Nosferatu. It's not really going to serve much the purpose. I suppose, if anything, you could probably take the hand, the arm, and extend it out. And maybe put the little tiny rat in his hand. I guess you could do that. The thing about it, though, is it would still cause more problems and havoc getting this figure to stand properly. All the more reasoning why I did use a clear stand. So it really will be holding the figure upright as we will talk about in a second. This one does have, oh, that's fun. This one has some difficulty standing. So like I said, there's always that. One other thing we can certainly mention as well with all the Toonie Terror releases is that you do get yourself a back card. This card you can uh, cut right out and you can display behind the figure. Again, these are fine and good, but again, they just take up a lot of space if you ask me. When say I want to display, let's just say I display for the sake of argument, Ash, and we'll bring in Valak, as certainly this is a point I want to make. If I have all three of them next to each other with very little space in between them, having each one of them having their own corresponding background that of course I'm going to be cutting out, they're going to be overlapping one another. So for all that reasonings I've just mentioned, a lot of times when it comes to displaying the Toonie Terrors, I generally just display them on their own. I leave the cardboard back backgrounds off altogether. So let's go ahead and remove the little rodent from Nosferatu's hand, and we're going to go ahead and take him off the display stand as well. This just, by the way, is a NECA clear stand. You can usually buy these, I think, in packs of 10. And boy, have these ever come in handy during the time that I've reviewed figures, not only just NECA, but any figures that have some difficulty standing. Good thing to invest in, if you ask me. 
Anyways, we'll put that to the side and we'll have a look at Count Orlock. A nice looking figure. It's nice also that not only are we getting the more modern characters and monsters, we're getting ones from like days of watching horror films growing up myself to the more recent horror films like None, and then we sort of backtrack it quite a bit, quite a bit then even still to the 1922 silent film Nosferatu, where it does feature Count Orlock here, this vampire. He definitely does have a Orlock look to him while still keeping sort of to the idea that NECA is designing these figures based on what you could expect almost to run into in, say, a Hanna-Barbera cartoon. I don't know if you would run into, I guess you could, maybe Scooby and the gang, for example, are going off to a far-off castle somewhere in the woods, and maybe come across during their travels, Nosferatu. I do like the design of the figure, but he's very, like I said, spindly like well not so much spindly but he's designed like an ironing board very straight very flat and at times difficult to stand we'll talk about that in a second but before we do that i want to showcase some of the details done on this particular piece i love the bug eyes on this one very small almost pin sized pupils and you can see that he has the noted fangs on the front always a really interesting trait of nosferatu as well as the big ears on either side He's painted rather pale, perfect for this particular character, as well as the little tufts of hair also located on the side as well. For the rest of his outfit, gone would be, of course, a cape in favor of a long-tailed jacket or long trench coat style of jacket. Of course, as it has some buttons or little fastened buttons there on the front. Uh, this has been painted nicely in black. The primary color, of course, is more like a chocolate brown with sort of a scarf section here done in black as well. Now, talking a little bit about the arms, the arms drape right down to his sides. There is technically, yes, articulation where you can bring the arms forward, you can bring the arms back. And in a place I honestly didn't expect there to be articulation, he has articulation about three quarters of the way down his arm, just allowing that then his hands to rotate all the way around. It's not so much rotating these hands as it's rotating, of course, the area where his elbow would be. So I really wasn't expecting to see that there. Get a good gander at his long fingernails. I can't imagine he's clipping those anytime soon. They sort of blend into the coloring of his pale skin. You almost don't even see them right away until you look real closely. And as you can see, NECA simply just didn't sculpt long nails, long fingers, and then just painted the nails. The nails are actually a separate piece altogether, or at least sculpted separately from the rest of the fingers. So they do look like they're not just painted on. That's a nice touch. I like that as well. Something that you probably already see as well, there's this hinge on the hands. Adding some additional articulation, again, I really wasn't expecting to find on this figure at all. The fact that he did have this additional hinge on his hand. I don't really know what purpose it serves necessarily. I mean, if you want to give him in that cross pose, it's not something you can do by the elbow area here. While he does have the articulation in the hands, I know we're talking about posability early here. Uh, you really can't do too much with it. I guess you could have him having the summoning come towards me hand gesture. But other than that, I mean, it doesn't serve for me much purpose, I feel, to have articulation in the hand. I mean, technically, yes, you can rotate these all the way around and there's hinging back and forth. Uh, wow, I'm breaking format here by doing the articulation and postability on this guy so early. I guess you could have slightly strangling hands there as well. But anyways, going back to the rest of the figure, like, He's very narrow, broad in the shoulders, and tapers off further and further down you go. And then he's got these very skinny, narrow legs. With feet that are slightly, it seems, one is off from the other. Can you see that? This one foot is a little higher than this one right here. I think that is what's plaguing this figure with standing. It just doesn't seem like this foot is, is, is in the same place or it almost seems like it's even on an angle right here. And I think that's what's causing the difficulty for him standing. Thank goodness though, he does have a peg on the underside of his foot. So again, if you do have these ones available, make use of them, that's what they're there for. And at least you're not gonna have a Nosferatu that's landing and falling on the floor. A quick detail look on the back of the figure, mostly again, all brown with the additional detail done in black. And he does have the cuff of his sleeves also painted in black as well to match the same black that's in his legs. Talking about the posability on this guy, even though technically we already sort of started that, his head does rotate back and forth. 
but because of the way it's ball jointed into the shoulder, it's going to give you that awkward rotation when it comes to moving the head all the way around. See what I mean? It moves back, it moves. It still works fine this way, and it works fine this way. And I guess some could make the argument why you, would you even rotate the head sculpt like this anyways, but just to show you that it's pegged on an angle as opposed to straight up. Uh, while you're doing that too, almost dropped it, while you're doing that too, I do notice like the ears are a little on the prickly side, certainly not enough to draw blood, but they're a little on the prickly. You'll know what I mean if you pick this figure up for yourself. A little bit of the ouchies going on right there. The shoulders rotate all the way around. They're simply just pegged in place, so you can rotate those arms all the way up. I mean, he could get a good, vast yawn in the morning. Ugh. As you can see, like I said, it just rotates all the way around. When you're doing that, be careful of where the hands are. You certainly don't want to clip them, as you can see. They can quite easily hit the back of his jacket. So just rotate it out and make sure that they're out of the way. As we've already looked at, he does have articulation in the elbows, so you can rotate it back and forth that way. It's just simply pegged in place, nothing different there. The hands, as again a surprise to me, do hinge up and down, and you can rotate those all the way around as well. He doesn't have any waist articulation, simply just because he's all jacket. He's jacket as far as the eye can see, and then down below he's got the leg articulation, which basically is just a rotating back and forth. Now, you can sort of compensate... You can widen, I guess, angle the feet out to kind of give them a little bit more of additional stability. But again, the biggest problem, it seems, is this foot right here. It's not this one. This one is perfectly fine, but I draw your attention to this one. Because of the way it's angled all the time when you're putting the figure down, I feel like he keeps wanting to lean back. All the more reason, certainly all the more reason, to make use of a display stand. So I started this review with a display stand. I'm probably going to end this review also with a display stand. Oh, and also with his rat as well. Happy to see that NECA was throwing a little bit of love to the OG vampire from the 1922 silent film Nosferatu. He's the vampire that started it all. So to get him as part of the included lineup of Toonie Terrors, I gotta admit, it's pretty cool. I'm sure licensing will come to play when it comes to maybe releasing some of the Universal monsters, but could you just imagine how cool they would look also being part of the Toonie Terrors? When you really look at the landscape of this particular wave and the characters that we've gotten, Nosferatu dating way back in 1922, a little bit more recent but still in the past, we've got the Evil Dead 2 Ash, and a little bit more recent to that, we've got the Nun Valak. It's covering a lot of the timeline here, and all presented in three figures from the current wave of Toonie Terrors. Now, this lineup is currently available in retail stores and comic book stores. So if you're in the market of picking up any one of these, or have always wanted to see what a cartoon version of Nosferatu may look like, you're welcome. You can thank NECA Toys. And actually, speaking of thanking NECA Toys, big thank you to NECA for taking the time of sending Nosferatu, Evil Dead Ash, and the Nun Valak my way and allowing me the opportunity to showcase them to you guys. Let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of Nosferatu. I like, the, again, the idea that he included his little tiny rodent. A very nice looking figure, though. I'm really happy to see that they're covering all the territories. Whether, again, we will be able to get universal monsters will be probably the harder one because I know they're pretty tied up on licensing on that one. But I would love to see what they could do with the universal monsters as well. Either way, though, I am certainly rambling on. Let me know. Weigh your thoughts in down below what you guys think of this wave of Toonie Terrors. Which one is your favorite? I'm sort of pressed to find my favorite of the three because, again, each one of them represents a different time frame of me watching horror films. I certainly wasn't around for 1922, but I certainly remember watching Nosferatu and the impact it left behind. If you're also new to the channel and you're liking the content that you're seeing, consider the idea of hitting that subscribe button down below. Consider the idea of moving over to that bell notification and turning that on. And keep in mind as well that videos come to this channel regularly Monday to Friday at 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And thank you for watching, guys. As always, I'll see you guys next time.